Hi, I'm Josh Bell with the Miami Marlins. I wear NeuroGuard to help with strength and coordination when I'm in the weight room and help with balance when I'm on the baseball field. One of the most comfortable, reduces concussion, increases performance. You can't get a mouthpiece like that on the market. Not only is it a great product, it's super easy to use. I recommend it for any player, any age, at any level. Thank you guys so much and go check out NeuroGuard Plus. NeuroGuard mouthpiece makes it easier to breathe while playing basketball. The unique design is not as bulky as any other mouthpiece and makes you feel safe in concussions. NeuroGuard, they control my breathing while I'm riding. It stops me getting concussions while I'm wreck. It's very easy to use, so go pick one up today. You know, I'm still doing stunts. You know, in the concussions I've got, and I feel much safer with that. I'm doing, I'm doing like I said, I'm doing a whole lot better in the gym. The so NeuroGuard Plus, and you know, once this one wears out, you've got a customer for life. Because I'm telling you people, NeuroGuard Plus is the way to go. And me, Mark Ash says so. Parents, kids, coaches, Nero Guard. It's the future. Stay tuned. I mean, that's a good point. I think we might start seeing some go back. Lights are bright on Friday night. People train like moths to flame, and there ain't nobody Didn't around. Didn't mean to hit that again, but Even hey, first off, if any of y'all try to talk about a pick that we made last week and how we were wrong, go, you know what, after what happened last week. That might have been the craziest week of football that I, I legitimately can remember covering in the time that you and I have been covering this sport. Upsets a plenty, great games, some holy crap, how did that happen moments. And every every few weeks, you need a week like this to kind of remind you why you love this sport. And this was one of those weeks. Yeah, you know, like in 4A, there wasn't as many, no. like, pure upsets. But there was some, like, eye-opening, like, I don't know, like, Aubrey beating like Dallas the way they did, you know, like Destroying Dallas them. enters the <laughs> the year with high hopes, right? They're in the top ten. We had Dave Campbell's and Lake Dallas just, uh, you know, spits a bit, and Aubrey beats the bejesus out of them, forty four to fourteen. So there's some games like that, yeah. Uh, but as far as as far as pure upsets, not as many in four A, right? But two A and three A, there was upsets abound, and then five A. There was a couple as well. Yeah, there was, and just some Titanic games we'll talk about, of course, on this show and the three A show. This is brought to you by New Regard Plus and Big Country Blitz. Uh, also, that's Grant and I'm Terry, and this is Sideline to Sideline, the four A edition for Week Ten of the football season. Two more weeks in the playoffs start. Uh, can't, and wait. can't wait! Cannot wait! Cannot! I can't wait for where we're going this week. We are going to be seeing a playoff-like atmosphere, possibly a playoff rematch later on in the season. We'll, uh -huh. we'll talk about where we're going. Kingsville? Here little, yes, Kingsville. We'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk about where we're going here in a little bit. But let's go ahead and start, as we always do, reviewing the week that was before we preview the week that is. Uh, we're going to bring this one up just because we want to remind everybody that Austin LBJ is down there. Uh, after that thrilling Wimberley game, they've just kind of – gone through the crappy portion of their schedule, destroying teams like, you know, 85 to nothing. Right. Against Austin Northeast, right? They yeah. play a directional school. <laughs> yeah, you always learn that in college. If you're playing a directional school, you have a good chance to win that game. Again, I just, mean, unless it's like Carthage East or something, then, okay, <laughs> that's a tough matchup. But anywhere else, if you have East, West, South, North, yeah, if you got North two directions in your name you're, you're really screwed well yeah especially when you play lbj going into this because game. those cats let me tell you austin lbj 
<laughs> they can play, dude. Those guys are impressive. The only the, the only concern I have about LBJ Depth. is yeah, their numbers. Yeah, right. They don't have a lot. And like like Western Stark back in their heydays, you know, as good as they were, even when they won state, they didn't have a lot of dudes on the sideline. Yeah, right. That's how LBJ is. They get past that. Uh, it's going to be tough for anybody to beat them. Yeah, no, I, I agree. All right, now this one, this is uh, we, we jokingly, this is kind of like the sideline, the sideline curse. We recognize a team that started really well and they're having a really good season that has not been a, a, a thing for them, especially for a program like this. They've never really been truly good, making only fifteen playoff appearances. And we're talking, of course, Bridge City, yeah. and then they lose to LCM. But hey. I, this is a good loss. Oh, yeah. 21 to 18. Uh, you and I were just talking, you know, last week when we previewed this game, you know, you and I are real big on the Bears. They're, they were 0-2 to start the year, but they lost to Hampshire Fanat 13 to 7. And then Silsby. Now, Silsby has de-evolved this year, and they're not what we thought they would be. But at that time, that was a solid loss for the Bears. And since then, they've rolled on six straight wins. Uh, good win for them. And for Bridge City, as long as they just – can you know sometimes take these, care of business next week, right? Yeah, and they they should. They've got Liberty this week. And, and yeah. the thing is, though, is how many times do we see these teams, these Cinderella seasons, and that one loss just for whatever reason, it just derails it. I don't think it will for them, and I think they've already qualified for the playoffs. Yeah, but, they should. I mean, that was their only loss. They got one more to play. Yeah, and they're, this is one of those districts they've been playing district for a month now. Yeah, uh, they're they're going to end up playing seven district games. Um, but anyway, good win for LCM and for Bridge City. A good loss, I think. Yeah. All right. Salina, 45, <laughs> Paris 7. Man, a lot of people uh, about two weeks into the season thought that uh, this game right here in the future uh, would be a lot closer. But no, man. Salina, right now, Salina, 45, Paris 7. Right now, Salina is just on a different level than a lot of other teams in Class 4A. Look, th this is going to sound crazy saying this because what Salina's doing to these teams, but we promise you this is a really solid district. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, destroying Panther Creek, destroying Aubrey, destroying Sulphur Panther Creek, Creek and Salina was supposed to be the uh, marquee district matchup, right? Yeah. And they get over. Salina's playing on the road at Ford. Uh, at Ford. Right in Frisco, Ford Stadium, whatever they call that monstrosity, um, and Salina just just whips it out on them worse than they do against Paris, really. Yeah, like, and even Sulphur Springs. Yeah, um, yeah. And then last week, you know, Panther Creek survives Lake Dallas, forty six to forty four. And as you said, Aubrey, I'm telling you what, folks, we, we kept talking earlier in the year that Aubrey's hey, eight foot quarterback. Yeah, <laughs> we, we kept saying, hey man, that's going to be a really good it's team. It's Wimby in a football helmet. <laughs> Play for <laughs> he's Aubrey. a little bit thicker though. Wimby's like a, <laughs> yeah, a, like true. string bean, but he we, can't be that much thicker as tall as he is. And that is true. But uh, we kept saying, you know, hey, Aubrey's this really good team that probably end up being home. Yeah. And all of a sudden now, uh, with that win, they're gonna they're gonna make the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, Aubrey you know. beats Lake Dallas four forty four to fourteen. Remember, the enters the season as an eighty top ten team. Yep. And, and they were five. 5 and 0 going into district. Play. Right. Sorry, 4 and 0. Now, in, in saying that, this game feels like a culmination of last week they, you know, hey, if we beat Panther Creek, we're not only still in the playoff race, we're still in the district race, all that cuz they play Salina to start the game, season. It feels like this loss against Aubrey is that team where they had the two heartbreaking losses and they just, they're done. Yeah. You know, they got beat by Paris. That's the stunner still is getting beat by Paris, uh, 28, 23 to start district. Yeah. And it just feels like from that moment on, and, and we see these again, talking like how bridge city was the Cinderella that does that. We see this all the time where a mid ranked team, they just, they get a couple heartbreak losses in district and they can never quite recover from it. Right. All right. Graham 37 mineral bell zero. What a, a win to put on the resume for the steers. Well, and we're going to talk more about them here in the preview. And the way they did it. And the way they did it. But I also want to point out, and I know this sounds crazy, but let's remember this is where this program had fallen. A shout out to Mineral Wells for at least being in the ballpark with Brock and with Graham. Now, the Graham game got out of hand at, after the first half, but in the first half, Mineral Wells is starting to build something. And, and the yeah. fact is that it looks. After years of being a doormat, 
for years. They have been yeah. a, a classic doormat. Yep. I, I can remember in 2018, they were six and four, and people were like, why aren't you talking about them? Well, because they're six and four. <laughs> um, but, I mean, they've, they've got Eagle Mountain this week, and they legitimately aren't just playing for their playoff lives. They're playing for third place. Right. And, and that, you know, that means something. And, and so I just yep. wanted to point that. And we'll talk. Don't worry, grand, grand folks. We're going to be talking about y'all here in a minute a lot. Uh, Madisonville destroys Sealy 38 to 14. Man, once Sealy lost their quarterback, again, we talk about depth and stuff. They just haven't been able to replace him, unfortunately, for them. For Madisonville, just another good solid win. Yeah. All right. Let's go to La Vega 35, Robinson 22. Let me tell you, La Vega's Bryson uh, Roland made a statement in this game. Yep. Rams. He ran for 220. Two yards on 20 carries. He scored Le four of La Vega's five touchdowns. And, and more importantly, they got up on Robinson 14 to nothing. Robinson scored to make it 14 to seven. But from that point on, every time they needed to, to a first down, they were getting the first down. I mean, it's you're going to go, well, 20 carries at 222, that's good, but that's not like 400 yards. No, but what they needed him to do was to get first downs and yeah. to keep Robinson's offense off the field. And look, I still think – And I keep hearing it uh, week in and week out, people saying if La Vega's quarterback play could get up to the rest of uh, the same level as the rest of that uh, – the rest of the team, you mm -hmm. know, squads, special teams, offense, defense, right? Everything else, if, if La Vega's uh, offensive uh, – or their quarterback play – could get up to par with everything else, they would be almost unstoppable. And I don't think – I think he's coming around. I don't think there's a situation where the, the talent's the issue. It's just getting snaps. Right, and getting, yeah, yeah. And, and getting key snaps. And, yeah. and, and I will say this. For Robinson, I think this was a learning experience game. The Rockets, you know, we talk about – teams that have been doormats, you know, they have really struggled the last six, seven years. I think that the, they've made one playoff or maybe two, and they've got both times they were like five and five when they went to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. and, and Chris Lancaster and this team, you know, they earlier in the year, they beat Waco Conley. They're the ones that first beat Glenn Rose. They were actually in the game with Alvarado for a good portion of that game. So I think for Robinson, this is a good learning experience game. This is a tough district. I think Robinson will be fine in the playoffs. Oh, I do too. I, I would not want to play Robinson no, in the no. playoffs. I, I totally agree with you there. Uh, team, I wouldn't want to play in the playoffs, who I think everybody – Rode off at the beginning of the year because of how many players they lost. That's Pleasant Grove. Yeah, and man. Hey, good that call. That defense, dude. Yes. I, I, I'm telling you right now, the Pleasant Grove defense pretty much dominated a really good Gilmer offense, right? Uh, Buck Anderson had 12 tackles on the night for yeah. uh, Pleasant Grove. Uh, you know, Gilmer struggled to move the ball at all uh, against this Pleasant Grove defense. Uh you know, Pleasant Grove offensively, Jarrett Halter, 11 of 18 for 179 yards, passing two touchdowns. It's odd. Now, not record-wise and not status-wise, because Gilmer, when G.J. Kenny moved in, that, that was, you know, they were already, well, I guess this was already a state championship team, but this wasn't the same. They weren't, set, right. you know, 16-0 and 0 the year before and all that. But, man, does this not kind of feel <laughs> the same way? Like, they get this quarterback in that's supposedly going to be the final piece, and – the Gilmer offense, when they're playing good defenses this year, have kind of struggled. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just it's, – it's weird to see. Again, I'm not knocking what Pleasant Grove – good call. You're the one – I thought Gilmer was going to win this game. Uh, you called it. And I, I it's not the win that's kind of scratching. It's the 17-point difference. I, I'm telling you, man, Pleasant Grove is starting to – feels like they're growing yeah. up a lot quicker than what people thought they might. Yep, you're exactly right. All right, Stephenville, 42. Land passes, 31. Stephenville's Ryan Gar Gra Gafford. Throws for 242 yards. Tristan Gentry, five catches for 139 yards. Uh, and, you know, Lampasas is a solid football team. Man. I feel uh, like I mean, the very impressive win by Stephenville. I feel like I have been on the Lampasas bandwagon since I saw them last year. And this game just solidifies that because you and I are very, very high on Stephenville. And when you look at Lampasas' other loss, it was to Waco University, 28-21. Uh, um, th yeah, this is one of those games that both teams come out looking really good, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here's one. I don't know, maybe an upset, maybe not an upset, but uh, West Plains, Canyon West Plains, 43, Canyon Randall, 21. Uh, Randall came into the game 7-0, and West Plains is four and three, and West Plains just almost, you can't say wipes the field with them, far. but be, it beats them by basically three touchdowns, right? So a little bit of a shocker record-wise 
a uh, little bit of shocker overall. I, I thought Randall was more than that. Well, and you know, it's it's not like West Plains. Now, their three losses are solid losses. Um, Seminole, Bushland, and Argyle Liberty Christian. Argyle Liberty Christian is a super team at yeah, this point. Really dark. But game. it's not like Randall had played all, you know, paper teams. They they beat, you know, solid teams, including the two in the district to start 2-0 and in Dumas and Hereford. And we'll talk about their matchup here in a second. I, I This is one of those scores that that actually I was like, okay. It I, tracks I, for you then? What? No, it I'm saying it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. I, I'm, I'm confused okay. by it. You know, again, and if this is a game and we can't see every game, we can't read every, you know, we can't find every article. If this was a game that was way closer than the score, let us know. Grant and Terry at S2SSport.com. Uh, it could be one of those. But I was very surprised at a 43-21 game. Yeah, me too. All right, Hereford, 38, Dumas, 29. That was the game you were touching on. Uh, yeah, Hereford's receiver, Ethan Gonzalez, five catches, 129 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, I, Ethan Gonzalez might be one of the best receivers in the region. Oh yeah. And you know, we've talked about it over and over and over this team two years ago, went lo- young, realized started Coach all freshmen and sophomores. Almost. Right? Yeah. Just completely went 0 and 10 went 0 and, and, and got shut out or yeah. blown out like every yeah, Every I, think, week, right? I think Pampa was their close game of the year that year, and they still uh-huh. lost. But I'm sorry, they went one and nine. One Let's and give nine. them okay. credit. Uh, we should know we did the show. Yeah, they beat Randall that year, but that was the year Randall was completely terrible. Uh, but for the, for almost the rest of the season, they were beaten like a drum. And then you know, last year they got a little better. They were seven and four. Now they're six and two. They're all still juniors too. Two and one in district. Two and one in district. Uh, Caleb Rodriguez is great. As you're talking about Gonzalez, Caleb Rodriguez at quarterback, he's been really, really good. And and also this defense isn't great. Don't get me wrong. They've given up good, a lot of points to really good teams, but they're opportunistic when they need to be. They got a couple turnovers against Dumas in that win last week. So, and and, you know, for Dumas, this district oddly, it, it, it's really solid. And you've got West Plains who's going to make the playoffs. I think Randall and White uh, White Faces, Hereford, will make the playoffs. And then you've got Canyon and Dumas battling it out for that last playoff spot. Yeah, that's, I pretty, never, that's pretty salty. I never would have thought that Canyon would be struggling this much. I, I, that's been the one. And I know they were kind of reloading, but you kind of still felt that they've, they've – Still got a really good quarterback, though, right? I mean – yeah. I mean, and, you know, last year they were 9-3, and three, and you and I both feel that if, if the, the quarterback then hadn't got hurt, that they might have – I mean, I thought they were maybe the region favorite. Um, and, and I really thought – you know, when I say young, I mean, heck, they returned eight on offense and six on defense. So I've just been really surprised that the Eagles have struggled. Well, going back to Hereford, uh, the white phases, their story's not over yet for this year, but looking ahead to next year – Watch out. Yeah. The whole region might run through Hereford next year. Yep, I agree. All right, Bay City 26, El Campo 20, man. Bay City's uh, quarterback, Alex Estrada, throws for 220 yards. Keaton Nunez, 200 – or not 200, I'm sorry, 92 yards <laughs> uh, receiving. And uh, Bay City, after that loss to Edna, has gotten back on track. Edna's uh, the only loss that uh, Bay City has. We were high on uh, Bay City coming into the season. Took a little shine off of them, losing like they did to Edna, but I'm back on the Bay City train now. No, I, I totally agree, and I'm going to so say – So much athleticism there. Yes. You and, know, what, what are they like up front? Can they, can, they, uh, can they stand up if they're coming north in the playoffs after two or three rounds – uh, can they stand up to the defensive lines that are waiting for a kill door? Right, right. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I'm going to ask this again. I don't understand why El Campo after that loss is ranked. I, I, I it, we'll see. They play Port Lavaca Calhoun this week. Uh, the Sand Crabs are four and four, but they're three and zero in district. Now, to be fair, they've beaten every you know the the bad teams. They haven't played Bay City and El Campo, but yeah, we'll see. I just, I, I just don't feel that. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's finish up the review with Pine Tree beating Chapel Hill. Now, to be fair to Chapel Hill, Demetrius Brisbane was out again, but still, Pine Tree continues the, hey, we've dropped down, and hey, it's kind of nice at this competition because we have the same roster size and yeah, everything. Yeah, Pine Tree wins it 20-14, to 14, and this was a heck of a game, by the way. Yeah, I good, mean, this good job by Chapel Hill to tuck, stick around uh, in this Pine one. Tree's uh, quarterback, Matt Cates, hits Jordan Taylor on a 73-yard touchdown pass 
with 358 left in the game to win it. So it's not like Chapel Hill was out of it. Uh, Pine Tree had to pull out all the stops and hit a big haymaker, a 73-yard touchdown pass with under four minutes left. So, I, 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 But I, huge win for Pine Tree, man. I want to remind everybody. This has, you know, we this has been called the District of Doom for a few years. And my contention was it's not a District of Doom if you know the four playoff teams. A District of Doom is when you don't know who the hell is going to make the playoffs. And if Pine Tree wins out, they win district because yeah. they will they will have beaten Kilgore. And if Kilgore wins out, Pine Tree will have the uh I mean they've lost to Kilgore. I'm sorry. I, I said they won. Uh they but they will win. I'm sorry, I'm I've got that wrong. If Kilgore wins out they will win district and they will they only got one more game left man that's I, I, coaches do y'all like that do y'all like having the late by uh, i know some of y'all listen uh coach well coach x is by um but no this district has wow. truly wow. Wow. <laughs> this district has truly become the district of doom because a chapel hill a lindale will end up missing or even a henderson could still miss the playoffs because you know that that win for henderson beating kilgore that's I don't what know, i was thinking the district about. with uh van alstein and farmersville and community and <laughs> all them, they got something to say about that <laughs> yeah, they gotta go they're beating it. each other up you don't know who's coming out of that district all right i mean right after all that yeah, confusion be by your definition I I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That, that that whole segment went into flames. <laughs> we're going to take a break. And when we come back, the aforementioned Coach X, and we're going to talk about what game we're going to. And we're going to preview the rest of week 11 or week 10 here. We're on going to Summer You Summer. Bite, You Buy this week. Yes, sir. Graham, Texas. Hi, I'm Josh Bell with the Miami Marlins. I wear NeuroGuard to help with strength and coordination when I'm in the weight room and help with balance when I'm on the baseball field. One of the most comfortable, reduces concussion, increases performance. You can't get a mouthpiece like that on the market. Not only is it a great product, it's super easy to use. I recommend it for any player at any age or any level. Thank you guys so much and go check out NeuroGuard Plus. NeuroGuard mouthpiece makes it easier to breathe while playing basketball. The unique design is not as bulky as any other mouthpiece and makes you feel safe in your cushion. NeuroGuard they control my breathing while I'm riding. It stops me getting cushions while I wreck. It's very easy to use, so I'll go pick one up today. You know, I'm still doing stunts. You know, in the concussions I've got, and I feel much safer with that. I'm doing, I'm doing like I said, I'm doing a whole lot better in the gym. So NeuroGuard Plus. And once this one wears out, you've got a customer for life. Because I'm telling you people, NeuroGuard Plus is the way to go. And me, Mark Ash, says so. Parents, kids, coaches, NeuroGuard. It's the future. Stay tuned. I mean, that's a good point. I think we might start seeing some go back. If you think that train wreck uh, at the end was bad, here comes Coach X. Hey, Terrence and Grant Tholomew. I haven't heard that in a long time. I have an idea. My uncle Rosie used to always call me. When I somebody used to always call you that uh, when I first met you, I think it might have been on the three A board, but I, I I always called you Grantavius, and that's what Noe intern Noe the pro calls you now is Grantavius. I have an idea. We need to get get to our oh wait, we need to get out to our views, listeners, and any other passerbys, but mm -hmm. particularly the coaches out there who tune in tune in every week to hear you two, but mainly me. It's gold ball season. Well, almost. No, Grant, not what you got to deal with. I'm talking about district championships. It was more of a greenish yellow. It wasn't quite gold. 
Yeah, until Mr. Pimple know. popped it. Uh, I, I'm talking about district championships and playoff season. Contrary to those popular songs, this is the most wonderful time of the year. Let's just say some this weekend we're going to be going out into the snowy drifts of East Texas to chop down playoff tree. Um, yeah, it's that time of year, folks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got to go. You know how cold it is. and hope he's not as salty as he was last year. I don't know. It, it just, it's weird, though, that everybody thought you were voicing him. I don't know why everybody thinks that. No, that's playoff Nobody, tree. Nobody trusts us anymore. I say let's have a competition for you guys that are winning these trophies. Each week, you can win a ball. You take a picture of it in a spot that it's not supposed to be in. You know, like in a bathroom or under a sink or a bedroom. Maybe you're resting on something. I think a lot of coaches will be really excited about that competition like this. <laughs> Have fun with it and let's see where we get. Maybe involve your family. I think this is going to be fun. I hope if anybody knows this the story that he's alluding to. I hope we never med- need media credentials at this one. Particular I just want to say school. though, you, we don't do truly in jokes on the show. Like we do in jokes for the show. Like you buy, you buy. Yeah. This was my request, <laughs> and Coach X, mwah, Chef's kiss. This is such an in joke that if when you know, we, you know, if man. you know, you know, and if when we retire, we might end up saying it. But anyway, send your maybe so- we could put those pictures up on Patreon. There we <laughs> go. Two ninety nine. We would. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> Cheapest board you'll ever buy. <laughs> I think we would then be. I think the UIL would actually step in somehow and figure out a way to outlaws from doing shows. Anyway, send your submissions to at Grant and Terry or at Coach X Picks, and that <laughs> is what Coach X has to say. Oh, genius, right, Coach X! When I count you out, you. Always step up with a great idea. Uh, I, I, man, I wish I didn't know you were gonna say that. I'd have pulled the just when I think you, you know, you can't do anything stupid. You totally turned it around. <laughs> all right, let's talk about where we're going this week. You wow. bite, you buy. It's the matchup. We've all been kind of saying, hey, this could end up being special. They've got to work their way through it. Graham had the early loss of Springtown, but again, that now announced the game. Yeah, Rock versus Graham. Well, that's where I was going. Okay. Well, I don't know. <sighs> Sorry. Man. Anyway, you got to ruin it now. Brock versus Graham. I don't care who wins. I don't even want to go now. No, uh, me Brock, either. We're not going. <laughs> Brock we're, versus Graham. We're going to Shepherd versus. Um, I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing? Just trying to name random schools right now. <laughs> Shepherd Shep- versus uh, what's the Huntington. Or something. I don't know. You're not allowed to. Man, I hope Huntington never gets good because that will be a tough one to have to go watch you. I, go, I will not. I won't even. I will you never to mention Huntington them. is I Coach X place. to Gunter. Worse. Yeah, Worse. yeah, because yours Worse. isn't made up. Um, you know, his, his mom, his, his mom just don't want to tell him that. You know, we had to buy certain cereal, and you know, <laughs> hey, I needed some money that week, so I put some roaches in there. Uh, but no, seriously, Brock versus Graham. Mm-hmm. Uh, Graham seven and one on the year. They're only lost to Springtown, but man, that's again. Look at where the porcupines are. In fact, we'll I know one so. loss, right? Yes, and a good. It was a good game, and that was also without their starting running back. Uh, and, and you know, Ry- Ryland Monsey is it, for all the talk about Ty Thompson. Uh-huh. Ryland Monsey last year had seventeen hundred yards receive uh, r- rushing in like. Four or five hundred yards uh, receiving. He is to me. He is just as much of the go daddy as Ty oh, Thompson yeah. is. And Ty Thompson's special. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, both of them are. And then you throw in Harrison Brockway, yep. who's been pretty good the last few years, right? Yep. I mean, he's putting up big numbers. This, you know, this Graham offense is a uh, triple headed monster. Uh, very balanced. They can they can win if you want to. Uh, if you want to play a flashy Lamborghini game, we can we can win that way. Or if you want to just muck it up in the middle and let's, you know, a, a slug fest, a street fight, they can win a street fight. Yeah. You know? Uh so that's what Brock's up against. Now the thing is Brock's the same way. You want to have a flashy high flying game. Well, we can do that with our quarterback, you know, and Brody Woods. Or you want a street fight? All right. Here's Cody Farmer, our running back, and, right? I say, and our defensive front's really tough and really physical, as is Graham's. And, and I want to say this about Brock's offense. On the year, they're averaging 200 yards on the ground, 192 through the air, but they've played so many teams where they're just browbeating them like Burke Burnett last week right. that, that, that they can pass. This is not – this is not old Brock. This is not even last year's Brock where the, the one thing and you know that we all were concerned about 
was turnovers. And you look in that Malakoff game, and that's exact. This isn't that. This offense is dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, Colt Matlock is one of the most – he is turning into just uh, – if you need a punt return for a touchdown, Colt's got it. You need yeah. a kickoff return for a touchdown, Colt's got it. And then you got Cody Farmer, who is very underrated at running back because, I mean, when you look at, you know, the one thing Brock's – short history is they have a lineage of running backs and tight ends and linemen. Um, and Cody Farmer doesn't have the name of Letty French in that group, but he is putting up really good numbers. And again, their numbers get kind of held back because of how bad they're beating teams. Yeah. Um, and, and, oh, yeah, they have another really good wide receiver in Cannon, Cannon Stevens. Stevens yeah. and, and for me, though, the most impressive thing for Brock was – how quick they rebuilt their lines because they lost the the line talent what was gone. I mean that's yeah. the one thing we were all concerned about them mm -hmm. moving up into 4A will their lines and yeah they're a, they're a lineman factory dude. Yeah, they are. Now, let's not one thing that's kind of gotten washed in the blender here or lost in the blender here is the Graham defense. Yes. They hadn't given up a point in over a month. They only give up an average of 6 points a game. Yep. Let, let's see. Going through this, they've given up. They've given up points in two games, thirty-five to Springtown in that loss, and then fourteen to, to Gator in that Decatur in that win. Um, both of these teams played Decatur. Uh, Brock beat Decatur twenty-seven to seven, and again, uh, Graham beat them thirty-four to fourteen. So, I mean, their scores are almost right. identical, you yeah. know. And again, when you're beating a team forty-two to seven, and the other team they only beat them forty-two to fourteen, that that doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. Um, I, I'm we have been to some great games this year, and I am I'm looking forward to this. Thoroughly one. excited, yeah. And if you're out there, we're going to be out there at the the Graham tailgate. Uh, by the way, uh, we have coaches shows for both of these teams. I will be recording them tomorrow. They will be up tomorrow afternoon. Um, I, usually, man, and you and I have talked about this so many times on road trips. I will be 100% honest. Usually, week 10 and week 11, I'm just ready to get to the playoffs. This week, I am thoroughly excited because this is not only a great game. There is a chance we're seeing this game again in the playoffs. Very well could be, yeah. And I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of Brock uh, fans and Cram fans out there. I the hope we see Tommy. Right? Tommy Hayes. We love Tommy. Yeah, He's great Tommy's dude. great. I'm sure he'll be on the sidelines staffing pictures. So, it comes to nut cutting time. Who do you like in the game? Well, let me read what Coach X has to say first. Okay. Dude, we made it to week 10 without talking about Brock. Crazy, man. Grant just slipped it in there, which also is the name of his sex tape. So I think slipped we should. Slipped it in there. Yes. Is that what we named that? Yeah, slipped in it. <laughs> so Brock finally the moved. Slovakian traffic. Showing. Okay. I, by the way, I need to not. I need to make sure you or do. the dirty raccoon. Or I need the angry to make... raccoon. That's my best sex move. I think the I... angry raccoon. Were you scratching punch like it's your no, life? No, you just Google that. It's act gross. Like, act like you're trapped in a trash can. <laughs> I need to make sure you don't have access to post things on Patreon because you're. You're, you're, you're enjoying your shiner tonight, and I think we can wake up and be in trouble tomorrow. Anyway, so Brock, Just fi October so Brock October. finally moves up to 4A, and everybody was like, yeah, that'll bring them down a peg or two, but it didn't. Hey, if Graham or the Steers, what do you call their girls' team? I think they're isn't there, they have a separate name, I think. Like the Blues or something Yeah, like yeah. That. So, oh, he answered it. Sorry, he answered oh, it. He? Trick question, it's the Lady Blues. That's how you know I don't read these beforehand. <laughs> it's the Lady Blues, which sounds like what happens to a woman after she has a baby. She gets the Lady wow, Blues. Making wow, making fun of post- Partum depression. I say embrace. Wow. The, I say embrace the fact we are more uh, PC than that. We're a little bit more woke than that. Yeah. Checks. Oh, now you're on the other political side because on the two. Well, you know, oh, you're listening. Oh, I get it. No, you're going when to your. When it comes to postpartum depression, it hits no, no, me. No. Str I I suffered through that a while. So I. Take there are two to problems that. with that. I don't right. want to talk about, but I just want to point out, I appreciate it. Bigger city. When I got pardoned from <laughs> it's not in prison part. <laughs> and I was depressed. Can wow, I, finish, I had all these free meals this in isn't prison. Even the, I, this isn't okay. even the last show, folks. It's one of those nights. I say embrace the fact that you're a heifer. Heifer pride never dies. That actually sounds pretty good. Brock wins. So he has Brock. <laughs> so you wanted nut cutting, which, by the way, I didn't even realize. Did you even catch you said that? But Graham steers and you said it's oh, not. Oh no, I didn't. I, I did, and that was a genius. <laughs> good, thing. I, you wrote that down earlier. No, I did. Uh, who do you have winning the game? Uh, I was going to ask you, but I'll, I'm going to go with it. I got Brock by 14. Well, I have Brock. Okay, but not by 14. 
Not a, it's not I'm a four rock by half a point. Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. I'm it, setting the. I mean, I'm setting the uh, numbers here. I'm we're the Vegas. Oh uh, yeah, that's Texas right. We're football. So Brock wins by point five points. Or like if you're throwing. No, I think this is a good game. I think I it's close. I think if you took the Graham defense out of this, Brock would win because they could keep. Uh, play keep away as could Graham, but I think the Brock defensive line, I don't know, but Graham's defense is going to keep them in it. I I do just want to point out one thing Mm -hmm. against a really good non-district schedule. Brock has yet to give up more than 13 points in a game yet. So yes, Graham's defense is all that, but I think Brock's defense is on par I don't want to say better. I think they're literally punching at about the same talent. I I think this is a, like a 21-7 type game. I don't I don't think either offense is going to score a ton, but not because their offenses are bad. I think this is maybe two of the best defenses in 4A Division 2. Uh, yeah, that actually, that's a good point. You bring up a really good point. My one of the year. God. Thank you. One of the last five Thank years. You. But yeah, oh, come you're on. Doing well. you're doing I called well. that van you over Carthage upset. Remember that one? Oh, wait, I played that on Madden. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, God, and we all got hung for that. No, I never even said that. And people were like, you guys are idiots. I was like, I didn't say that. It's like a, yeah, an official my, that throws a flag. The back judge throws the, the flag. The slide judge gets all the crap and for it. And then every, every uh, yeah, other official gets it. That's, that's what you are to me. You're a bad official. I love you too, You're buddy. a bad actor. You know what? No, you're not that bad. I'm sorry. I, uh, I didn't realize you were being all sweet. Uh, but no, I look. I like Brock. But it is close. And, and the reason I say 14 is usually in games like this, you, you'll you have it being like, you know, I'm saying Brock's ahead 14-7 and Graham's pushing and then Brock's able to get a right. turnover and punch it in. This is a one possession. And and I do wonder, Graham. It, it should be a slobber knocker. I, I do right? wonder. I, I expect a bunch of uh, – there, there's going to be a lot of dudes on Saturday have to get in, come in early for treatment. Can I, can I ask you something, though? Yeah. Go ahead. When you look you can't at ask this, me anything. I'm an open book. Dude. Is Santa open real? Book. Um, you look at Region One. Can't ask me that. You look at Region One. Nothing four, about Region One. <laughs> region One. You're not gonna let me ask me this. anything you this want about Region Two. Show and you're. I am never listening to you when you <laughs> after the two A show. You go, hey, can we just take like a thirty minute break and let me chill? Golly. Anyway, okay. In, in 4A Division Two Region yeah, One. Yeah, seriously, yeah. go ahead. Is there a chance that these two teams maybe aren't showing everything in this game? With anticipation, because I mean, both of these are the no. prohibited favorites going into the playoffs. Sure, no, I don't think so in this game. Do okay. you think Billy's going to do that? I don't know. I don't think so. I, that I dude is a man's man, a dude's dude. No, he's no, coming no, I, out. I don't, I don't think, think either, they're doing I, that. I don't think either coach is saying, "Hey, let's run vanilla." But I also don't think either coach is saying, "Hey, let's let's do some things that we haven't shown all year." Well, yeah, but that's not. I mean, that's. I mean. You're, yeah, you're not going deep into your playbook. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I mean. I, no, I mean no, they're they're not going to do that, right? But they don't do that anyway. I yeah, don't think. I, mean, I, they I, don't, I, I think during the regular season they just don't do that. Yeah, no, I right. Get you. I mean they work on stuff, but they yeah, they're keep kind, that. Brock's kind of like I mean not as extreme as Carthage can be, but Brock is kind of like one of those that. They'll hit the playoffs, and you'll see some things, and you'll be like, "Whoa, where was that all yeah, year?" Yeah. I was just curious. It's just one of those things. Uh, no, but, I, but I don't think either either team okay. is holding back on this one. This is a district championship in a region that's up for grabs for basically the winner of this game to meet the, 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 loser, the loser of this, of this game, game later right? on. I, I mean, I think that's where we're headed. At right. That. Right, and again, Springtown long-term. versus Decatur, man, this is a good one too. Uh, nobody realizes how good Springtown is. Uh, I did not uh, realize how good. No, I <laughs> let me finish here. <laughs> Kamala. Let me finish. I'm just going to grab you by the. <laughs> Ooh, actually, that's pretty hot. Well, grab me by the what? Okay, tell me, no more. Tell me, tell me one give more. Give me those. Okay, no I'm more. sorry. Springtown and Decatur. <laughs> Nobody knew how good Springtown was, and especially me, until you went out to that Springtown uh, China Spring game. And you were talking about them so much that I went back and watched the game because there's no way, but I trust your eyes. Lo and behold, yes, the most underrated one-loss team in the state of Texas right now is Springtown. 
And Kane Hill, their quarterback, 1,620 yards passing, almost 450 yards rushing. Uh, Braden Butler at receiver, Ryan Kirk at uh, running back. A really good defense. They're very physical and they're huge. Yes, on the line. That, see that you know is look the Kane Hill story is awesome. Young quarterback. He has stepped in. He doesn't play like a young quarterback. The thing that impressed me then was that was his second start. Uh-huh. But when he scrambled, he was calm. He, there, it wasn't frantic. Um, that defensive line, very physical. Uh, I, I just as a team and look the Josh and I think a lot of it was it's Joshua. But here's the deal: go look at Joshua this year. They're running flex bone. They're playing keep away. And every game that they've won or lost, it's a one possession game. Joshua is better than what people give them credit for in five A. And so I, think, I would never heard thought that was not on my uh, bingo card. Jo- for tonight, oh. Joshua is better than what people Dude, think. I had, again, we talk about Hereford. I had to do a Joshua show with Gary Robinson, oh, and man. it was painful. Uh, but on the, just to, to give you note, on the year, Joshua is 4-4, four and four, and their four losses are uh, seven points to Tyler, seven points to Red Oak. Middle, Highland Park pushed it in, but, you know, Highland Park's an up-and-coming program. How bad was Highland Park? 31 nothing. Oh, that's. I mean, <laughs> respect. Well, yeah. I mean, it's. It, it, well, I mean, to be fair, there have been years in the last few that Highland Park would have beat Joshua two hundred zero if they wanted to. Right. Anyway, my They'd point be is like Referio and Freer, yeah, ninety five to nothing. To nothing. At half. And, and, and <laughs> my point is, is that if they would have lost to Graham. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't have been. It wouldn't. We wouldn't have had to underrate Springtown. Right. Um, right. Right. Now, in saying that. I think Decatur is by far the best five and three team in the state because look at their three losses to Brock. This score is 27 to seven. It was way more competitive than that. That was one of those weird games where there was a, a, a lightning or weather delay and they, you know, all that they lose to Argyle Liberty Christian. We always talk about them. They're a super team. And then they lose to Graham. The problem is, is they do not have a quality win. I don't consider Denison a quality win. I don't know that their defense is up for it. Look, the I don't Caters either. quarterback, Jed Ross, 1,500, almost 1,600 yards passing. Um, he can go off all night. Yes. But I just don't think that the Cater defense is up against the physicality of what uh, Springtown is going to throw at them. And, and by the way, first off, I still think the Cater is going to play a, a while in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. But this team next year. They're going to be back to where they were the last couple of years because right. they return almost everybody offensively. But yeah. I have Springtown in this game. I think it's going to be too. really, really close. And, and you, you know, you, you've got to, again. We talked about before. What will the, the young Springtown team do in the big lights? But you can literally say the same thing about Decatur. All right, here's what Coach X has to say. Classic line from the Simpsons. Good night, Springtown. There will be no encore. That's what I think of it when I think of Poho. Never fails. And Spinal Tap was true to their word when there was no encore. And the carnage that happened after that line will be nothing compared to the carnage that will take place on the field this Friday. The Poho win and put Decatur's in the toilet bowl. Wow, he's really – and I don't disagree with him. No, I don't I, I, th- I think there is a realm where – if this becomes a shootout, Springtown could get in some trouble. But if even then, I'm like you. I just I don't until the Decatur defense plays good against a good offense, I don't trust them. Yeah. All right. Here's some quick hitters, real quick. All right. right? Canyon versus Hereford. Go. Hereford. Hereford, uh, me too. Canyon's like just Herford. been a disappointing this year. And Hereford has been very impressive. Yeah. Sulphur Springs and Lake Dallas on paper looks great, but I like Sulphur Springs. And might not even be close. I, the only thing you have to worry about is this is Lake Dallas's last chance to stay in the playoffs. And you know how you get a, a wounded team. But if you can, you can, you can't, you can't. No, I agree. Right? And I agree. I but, don't think they can. But so that, no, I, I like Sulphur Springs. I'm just saying, don't be surprised if this is close. All right. Another, if you think you can, you can't, can't. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Aubrey versus Frisco Panther Creek. Go. Panther Creek. And if they don't win by a lot, then I truly, and I like what Aubrey's done this year, but if Panther Creek don't win by at least two touchdowns, I'm really confused about that. I'm going in Aubrey and the upset by Love seven it. to 14 points. All right. Chapel Hill versus Henderson. Go. Legitimately one of those when you these two teams this play. This could be a game of the week, by yeah, the way. You throw out the records when these two teams yes. play. And this yes. is one of the few teams that got to be blood rivals that got to play against each other in state, which was mm-hmm. always really cool. It, it look, if Brisbane's healthy, I still like Henderson, but Henderson has kind of – the wills have been a little shaky after that upset over Kilgore, but I still go with the Lions in this one. I go with Henderson as well. All right, Glen Rose and Benbrook. Glen Rose 6-2. and two. Benbrook 8-0. and oh. Look, I – you and Give I – Give me – I'm going to say mine right now. Go ahead. This might even be an upset. 
but give me Glenn Rose in a close one. I think it is actually an upset because I know Evans had been out. He's been back for a few weeks, but they're not, they hadn't been in as impressive as they had been in the earlier parts of the year, right? Ben Brooks is kind of taking care of business. But I, I'm taking Glenn Rose to get back on track. But this can be a heck of a game. Well, you know, this is one of those games where we just talk about Decatur. I don't know if I trust Glenn Rose defense. When, when they've played good offenses, they've given up 49. They've given up 71. They've given up yeah. 35. And Ben Brook is built on a massive offensive line. And they're going to... Fire off the ball, old school. They, w- w- I remember one Damn, time you're saying, talking me out of my pick. We're not even worried about gaps. We're just worried <laughs> about driving the defensive line into the ground. Uh-huh. They've got a big running back. They've got a couple. They, they got re- a- they shift the gaps themselves. Yes, right? exactly. They recreate the gaps. Yep, the a gap. Now all of a sudden is where, <laughs> and, and you don't. The, that's where one of those the things, B gap or C gap was because you've totally rearranged the whole thing. So I see that. And when you do that, well, that confuses linebackers and you're already playing a big running back. You don't want your linebacker tippy toeing into the gap or worse, having a false step. Yeah. I, I think Glenn Rose will hold on, but I think this is going to be a 56 to 55 type game. Yeah. I I, I think it could be. And I, you and I have been real big on Glenn Rose all year and and, until that the losses. And I still want to see them, finally get to that mountain. But my God, I am rooting for Benbrook for the season. This would be their fourth playoff in the history of their program. Which is fairly young. Yeah, but I mean it's 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 got some years now where three and I think all three of them have been kind of yeah. six and five, six and five. And I think the first one was like in 2020. Um yeah. I, I just I, I like Glenn Rose in this game, but I'm really hoping Ben Brook at least shows that they can legitimately be a competitive team in the playoffs. Oh, I think they will be. All right. Uh, Madisonville versus Belleville. This is not a quick hitter, right? Uh we're done with quick hitters. Now let's go into some end game in-depth analysis on the rest of these games for the night. Madisonville versus Belleville. Uh, what a doozy of a game right here. Madisonville comes in with Phillip Green at uh, at running back and Ty Williams at quarterback. They've both been just spectacular the last two years. Tristan Whaley at receiver. Uh, that that Madisonville offense is underrated. Oh, yeah. No, I totally agree. And, and we saw that earlier in the year. Uh, when you know they moved the ball well, and I know Malakoff's three A, but Malakoff's special. Right. They moved the ball well against Malakoff. They moved the wa- ball well against Columbus, and then they spit the bit against Center and, and only scored fourteen. I don't know if there was injuries and stuff. Um, the the thing is, is man, man Center's defense is actually pretty good. Oh yeah, no, no, I, I know. I'm just saying, I, it just kind of was like surprising. Um, you know, Belleville, we think of that slot T and everything, but the thing, and we think about how good DJ Sanders is, but man. The, D. And D.D. Murray at running back? Yeah, but Ooh. man, the rest of the defense for Belleville has not been really good. That, that's their Achilles this year against good offenses. Yeah, you know, they, against Columbus, when we saw them, they situationally, they were great. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good point. I mean, they that's didn't a good point. shut Columbus down, but there's nobody out there. That yeah, it wasn't like Columbus was down. scoring a point. I mean, and by I the mean, way, their well, defense plays complement to their running game, yeah. right? With Didi Murray, uh, Isaac, and Renicki, uh, you know, so. I, I think Belleville's going to be just fine. I left that Columbus game thinking, man, Belleville's going to be just fine. Oh, I know. I agree. I'm just. I think Belleville takes this game by seven to 10 points. Yeah, I, I was going to round all that. I think at the end of the day, I still don't trust Madisonville consistently. Um, I think mm. Belleville, being Belleville, maybe we're starting to see them round into form as the playoffs come on. Uh, Coach X, this is his final one of the night. Battle of the Villes. The winner has to take on Stephenville, and then you play Needville to be the best Ville. Well, Belleville's going to skip all that and be the best bill that you can be and if you do that all you have to do qnbc theme star wipe the more you know belleville wins so we all three think belleville wins all right brownwood versus stephenville the battle of 377 one of the best rivalries in the state of texas it was okay <laughs> we were there last year oh, it was so brownwood fun, for this one it was so much fun. i have never Felt so bad for a team, though, when Brownwood, when Stephenville is literally picking the junior high quarterback out of the stands and Brownwood's like, oh, we're finally about to get it. And then Stephenville just managed to yeah, start destroying string. Yeah, them. Because they're it's Stephenville's <laughs> last year in that game we were at. Stephenville's starting quarterback and their backup quarterback got hurt on, on the, the same, same play. Yeah. 
same play. And Stephenville just came out and did what Stephenville does. Uh, though. But yeah, man, Steve, uh, Brownwood's four and three. Stephenville seven and one. I think Stephenville's got this. Just not just because they've got a physical defense, but I mean, we're going back to what Stephenville's famous for this year, especially is their offense with Ryan Gafford at quarterback. Sawyer Wilkerson at running back, who has been such an addition to the Stingville team coming over from Comanche. And then Tristan Gentry at receiver, who is uh, one of the best receivers in class. Do 4A, they always very have the best man. receiver in 4A, it feels I know. like. <laughs> but Tristan Gentry's got a little bit more pep in his step and a little bo- bit more wiggle in his waggle, you know. <laughs> You getting all Harry Carey in yeah, there? Thank you, good, dude. thank you. Yeah, Brownwood, you can't. I can't trust them. You know, th- their three losses are to three quality teams: Glen Rose, La Vega, and Lampasas. But the closest win a loss was by ten points. Yeah. You know, and you and I always say, yeah, losses against tough teams is a quality, but you got to be competitive. Yeah. Yeah. They were competitive against Lampasas, but not enough at the end. Um, I, I think well, they don't have the they don't have the defense to hang with Stephen. No, I I just honestly I feel like Stephenville can name their own score. I do too. All right, Seminole versus Midland Greenwood to close out the night. Uh, Seminole's quarterback uh, Wyatt Holmstrom, two thousand four hundred and twenty yards passing, among the best quarterbacks in four A, five A, six A, whatever. Right. Logan McCormick, his main target, almost a thousand yards receiving, and this defense uh, for Seminoles look really good lately. They've only given up about eleven points a game. Yeah, but look at Greenwood, man. This is a team that we all kind of wrote them off, not wrote them off, but we all kind of sh- kind of shake their heads when they lost. Quit the paying Sweetwater. attention, right? Yeah, and then when you cover so many teams, it happens. Losing the Sweetwater, and especially how Sweetwater had started. Now down in three A, Sweetwater has turned it around, uh, and then they beat Andrews in shallow water, and again, okay wins, not great. But here they are now, seven wins in a row. I just don't know if they have the defense to stop them. I, I you don't and either, I were, and I don't know if their offense can can you know move consistent against the Seminole defense. Well, and look, I... I mean, I, they, they're going to score some points, but yeah. I don't think they're going to be able to to just get in a shootout with Seminole, and that's what they need to do. Well, and, and I'll be honest with you. I, looking at, again, talking about this region, we talk about where we feel that Brock and, and, and uh, Men- or Graham is. I think Seminole's the one team outside of those two that there's always going to be one team that ends up in the region final that, that's like, okay. Oh, yeah, you and, get a quarterback like Seminole yeah. does. It could happen. And, you, and so I, I think Seminole wins this game, and I think Seminole might end up winning by two or three touchdowns. Oh, easy, yeah. Is that it? Yep. Got to hit the music. Again, I want to remind everybody, if you have any questions, thoughts, or comments, email them to Grant and Terry at S2Ssupport.com. Find us on all podcast platforms and S2Sgrantandterry.com. Or you can listen to or watch us on YouTube, of course, at L4 Media Company. Also, check out our Patreon. I just started a new series, and I interviewed the first coach. It's going to be talking to coaches more about like their how they became coaches their coaching lineage where they've been some stories about some of the old games and stuff and we're gonna that's gonna be our first true sideline to sideline patreon also grant have you seen my new podcast beyond the lights that's been done many many times oh Right. Good try. But speaking of, Grant and I are probably going to do some live chats and stuff on Patreon during the playoffs. Uh, probably maybe on Wednesday, maybe some on Thursday, depending on, how, you know, of course, with the playoffs, how the schedule is. So please check that out. Patreon.com forward slash L4 Media Company. And we want to promote the Patreon even more now because sideline to sideline, we're taking the next step next off year. We're going to try to get an app going to where all of our shows and all the 4A, 3A, and 2A information will be on our app. And you can check that out and all that. And that's what Patreon will help us do because we have found out through research and talking that ain't cheap. Anyway, until next time, he's Greg Goodwin. I'm Terry Bennett. This is Sideline to Sideline, the 4A edition right here on L4 Media. He told me.